Okay, thank you very much. Uh, welcome back. Uh, my name is uh, KVS Hari. I am Professor Rao's uh, second PhD student. And this is uh, Rohan, who is uh, Professor Rao's youngest PhD student who graduated last month. So, <laughs> so we will be conducting this session. And uh, it's my honor to uh, be the session chair, if we may call it, co-chair along with Rohan. And uh, I was told by the organizers that every speaker gets 20 minutes in this session. And I request uh, the speakers and Rohan will, hand, will show or wave uh, a five minute marker and a one minute marker to the speaker. <laughs> okay, so the first speaker uh, is uh, Professor P.P. Vaijanathan. P.P., as we all know him. Let me uh, introduce him uh, briefly. So Professor uh, Vaijanathan is the Kiyo and Aiko Tomiyasu Professor of Electrical Engineering at Caltech and a Life Fellow of IEEE. He has made pioneering contributions to many fields, including theory of filter banks, multi-rate systems, and array signal processing. His current research interests include sparse sampling in one and multiple dimensions, network signal processing, number theoretic signal processing, and applications in digital communications, array and radar signal processing, genomic signal processing, and multi-rate systems and filter banks. He has received numerous technical and teaching awards, including the IEEE Circuits and Systems Society Golden Jubilee Medal, the Terman Award of the ASE, IEEE Gustav Robert Kirchhoff Technical Field Award in 2016, and the Signal Processing Society's Technical Achievement Award in 2002, and the Northrop Grumman Teaching Prize. He's a member of the US National Academy of Engineering and the Foreign Fellow of the Indian National Academy of Engineering. May I now request uh, PP to deliver his talk. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I don't see Baskar. Oh, good, good. I'm glad you're still here. I thought. <laughs> All right. Because this is technical discussions are going to be uh, not technical presentations. So Truong told me, told me you can choose one of these papers. I chose the first one. And my understanding is that it has to be completely technical, and Truang tells me not even jokes. <laughs> so, okay, so I told him, look, I cannot give talks without jokes, so this will be the only joke. Okay, so joke is over now. <laughs> so, so now we are going to get technical. So this paper I am going to talk about is not my paper. We are all used to talking about our papers. When we have to talk about someone else's papers, first thing, we have to read it, right? <laughs> so I tried to do that. And this turns out to be a great paper, in fact, by Bhaskar Rao and KBS Hari, just in case you did not notice. KBS Hari is a gentleman who was the session chair who introduced himself. Just now he's sitting right here. Uh, he is one of the second authors. At the end of the paper, my presentation, there may be questions. You can ask very difficult questions because both authors are here. <laughs> no problem. I will direct all the questions to them. And you all know that how to identify Bhaskar, he is here. The second author can be identified. He is the happiest and most smiling gentleman in this group. So you look for the smiling gentleman, he is the second author. <laughs> All right, so with that, here we go. So this is the paper, 1989, can you believe it? Like, how many years, is it 100 or 50? Some, many years ago, right? So this paper is on something called root music. So some of you are technical here, some of you family, some of you are friends. I fully understand that the audience is not entirely technical. So I want to begin by saying this music does not mean music as in music. Okay, so it's not musical kind of music. This music stands for multiple signal something, uh, detection or something, okay. So the main point is that music is a specific algorithm that created a revolution in the 1970s and 80s and in those days, it was very difficult to technically analyze algorithms uh, because the mathematical tools were still emerging and so forth. So Bhaskar and his uh, student, KVSRI, his second student, uh, KVSRI, wrote this paper. I'm going to briefly talk about this. And I have only 20 minutes, so I'm going to skip some technical parts. Okay. So December 89, this is uh, 
KBS. I didn't put a Bhaskar's picture because you have seen many of Bhaskar's pictures already. Okay, so this was his picture uh, from the paper that is 30 years ago. Okay, 30 something years ago. Okay, now very briefly, today we are surrounded by sensors. Sensors are devices that sense signals. So here's so-called array of sensors we call it. Okay, so this array receives signals from various places. One could be from your aunt coming from New York. One could be from somebody else coming from somewhere else, right? So the sensors, it is known that they can detect at most n minus one different sources, source directions at one time. So called uniform linear array, that is the restriction of this, okay? And uh, this is called the direction of estimation uh, arrival, uh, direction of arrival estimation problem, okay? And there are many of these algorithms. Music happens to be one of those famous algorithms for doing this. There are many other algorithms. I am not going to go into the details, but very briefly, these sensor arrays, it's there everywhere today. It's there in cell phones. It's there in so many devices at home. There are all these applications, which I don't need to, all these places where they deploy sensors. I'm not going to go into the details. And the most important, okay, now I'm going to get technical for the next three or four slides. So you have to forgive me if you are not into that, okay? So the collected signals can always be written in this form, uh, like a matrix equation. And here, the thing called omega i, they determine the directions of arrival. Theta i is technically the direction of arrival. It's transformed into omega i. There is this equation. So from all these received signals here on the left, I don't have a pointer for some reason. The, from the received signals, you have to find what those theta i's are. This is the famous direction of arrival estimation problem, okay? And there were many algorithms. In those days, there were only two very famous algorithms. One is music and one is spirit, okay? I'm going to skip this slide because this is too technical, okay? So there is a statistical approach where what they do is we compute something called the covariance of this output vector. Okay, this covariance is something that we can calculate by collecting this data and then making appropriate averages of quadratic forms uh, as time cycles. And once you have this covariance, which is mathematically a matrix, it contains all the information about the directions of arrival. How to extract these directions of arrival from that covariance matrix that was pioneered by somebody from Stanford. His name was Schmidt in the 1980s, 86, I believe. So very briefly, this is what it is. Uh, you would compute something called the eigenvector matrix of this order covariance, and then a subset of this eigenvectors called the noise subspace, which is given at the bottom, the last n minus d eigenvectors that contains the information about all the directions of arrival. So in those days, there were techniques for finding those directions of arrival from these eigenvectors, okay? And th they would plot something called the music spectrum. What it is, this spectrum is plotted from the set of eigenvectors. Wherever there are peaks, then this omega would have information. For example, this first peak tells you there is first direction of arrival, second direction of arrival. There are five directions of arrival. So this is a very standard, well-known algorithm, okay? In this example, there are 12 sensors and five uncorrelated sources in this case. And the averaging I mentioned is done over about 400 samples, okay? Now, this algorithm had some problems because there is something called a grid search you need to do in order to find where the peak locations are because that was very limiting. There is a different algorithm called root music which came up later, which converts the problem into a root finding problem. They would define a, poly, a bunch of polynomials. So don't worry too much about the details, but there are these polynomials, PD, PD plus one and so forth. Oh, great, great, yeah. So these, yeah, these polynomials would basically all share zeros. They will all be equal to exactly zero at the points where there are the directions of arrival. For example, if there are five directions from which the sources are coming, right? One from your aunt, one from your niece, one from your professor who found out that you are not working. All this information is coming in five different sources, right? That means they will all, all that information will be present in uh, at, at the points where the directions from which the signals are arriving, these polynomials will become zeros. This is the main point. So this root music algorithm basically finds the locations where those zeros are, okay? That's what this algorithm does, okay? And this algorithm 
basically finds a whole bunch of roots of polynomials and those roots that are sitting right on the so-called unit circle, they tell you which one is your aunt calling, which one is your niece calling, which one is your student who is evading work, all that stuff. All that information is present on the unit circle of this so-called C plane. Okay, I know it's getting kind of technical here, so I am going to basically start telling you where Bhaskar comes in. Okay, so this business of finding roots, finally tells you the exact directions from which the signals are coming, right? And this arrival, exact directions, suffers from errors, okay? And the errors come from various places. For example, the error comes because the array output snapshots. From the array outputs, you compute the covariance. That estimation is from finite number of snapshots, so there is error. And then for the covariance, we compute the eigenvectors. There is error there. And from the eigenvectors, we go to the roots of a polynomial. Again, there is error. From the roots, we go to the DOS. Every step of the way, there are errors, right? So each of these can be mathematically analyzed. In those days, this was not so easy. Today, it has become routine 30 years down the road. In those days, very few pioneers, Moss Kave was one of the pioneers who did this, and then Bhaskar and Hari show, opened, uh, opened the eyes of the community, exactly how to algebraically analyze this. Moss Kave happens to be in the audience also here. And uh, th this was their main contribution. What I mean is if theta i is the exact direction of arrival, theta i hat is the estimated, this is what we mean by the error in the estimates, okay? And the error in the roots, let me first tell you, this formula is straight from Bhaskar's paper. I cut and paste from Bhaskar's paper on PDF, okay? And various technical quantities. So this is called the noise variance, that sigma stuff. This SK are so-called signal eigenvectors. Those are the eigenvectors E, D, uh, e, E0, even E2, I showed long time ago in a slide, okay? And in this case, L is a number of sensors, M is a number of signals that are arriving, N is the number of samples that you average over, okay? And this lambda K that appearing in that equation, those are the eigenvalues of that covariance matrix, so-called signal eigenvalues. Okay, so the problem is these formulas are complicated. I don't expect, if you have never seen this before, I don't expect you to understand it right now from here because it's more involved. You have to actually read the paper. Okay, but the point is that this is a very pioneering contribution. Okay, and this SMU sensitivity of the roots to coefficients, there is a formula here. And the great insight is that if there are DOS that are directions of variable very closely spaced, then because of the difference in that denominator, they are going to be very large here. That difference will be almost zero. This will be large. Therefore, the sensitivity is also large. This is a beautiful insight we get. So the beauty of some of these earlier papers, including this one, from that mathematical equation, you can actually get a lot of physical insight also from those formulas. That's one of the beauty of this. And another insight is the effect of the number of snapshots, so-called number of samples over which you average. The more samples you have, the smaller is the error in the roots. That's what this formula basically says. So I'm just highlighting formulas directly cut and pasted from Bhaskar's paper, okay? Bhaskar and Harry's paper. And again, even having found the roots, you have to go from the roots to the DOA. There is a standard way to be, in which you can analyze it. And again, straight from the paper, this is how the roots are affected if there is an error. Sorry, this is how the angles are affected if there is an error in the roots. That's this formula. So putting all this together, they have this glorious plot straight from the paper. There is one plot, the solid line, which is the theory predicting this is the error analysis and the broken line, dashed line, that is the actual simulated value. Such great agreement. Okay, again, this may seem like one more routine paper where theory agrees with experience. It's not like that because in those days, there was almost no analysis period. So this was a pioneering paper and many people after this followed this line of analysis and argument for many years. Even today people do that, okay? So this kind of a remarkable agreement between theory and experiments in those days when computers were slow. I don't know how long it took for them to generate this plot. It's not like today, okay? So this is an amazing thing. And as it goes up, it doesn't mean the error is increasing, the error is decreasing because of the minus sign in the, in the coordinate, in the, in the ordinate, okay? All right, with all that, let's see. Truly a pioneering paper, like I mentioned. Many citations, I can't remember, but if you go to Google Scholar, you will see this is the top cited paper from Pascal's group. Okay, 
So one of the amazing achievements. This is straight from Google Scholar. I cut and pasted the citations. Even today, I look at 2023. 2023, he is still, paper is still getting that kind of citations. Yeah, like I said, in those days, analysis was not so common. Very few pioneers like uh, Moss, Kave, and Oscar, and so, so on. Okay, Stoika, Nehorai. Okay, good news. Technical stuff is over. Now we can wake up. <laughs> Technical stuff is completely over. Progression of Bhaskar, I don't mean how Bhaskar progressed from student days to, because you already saw all those things. Progress in terms of photos. <laughs> this was his first photo in some IEEE paper with uh, KVS. Okay, in those days, black and white photos and then IEEE scanned all the old papers and put them on the Explorer and the images did not come out outstanding. This is not an outstanding photo, but be that as it may. Okay. And then papers improved and so it was better. And clearly this must be after tenure because he's smiling so much. <laughs> and even more. And now we are going to see a very wise man to whom you will feel so comfortable going for advice. Here is that. <laughs> All right, with that, thank you very much for asking me to talk.